If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it and it's free. Make sure you check out Poton Store. They have the new certain shield codes already available and they have automatic email delivery for these codes. You can get them in batches of 50 codes with a slight discount or individually for 89 cents each. They also have all these other promo codes. They have um, every other set you could imagine. And if you use Tailbone code, you get 5% off your final purchase. For the European players, Millibuds Gaming has everything from collectibles to all the latest cards from the latest sets, Cosmic Eclipse, Hidden Fates, and everything from Sun and Moon. Don't forget to check it out and use Tailbone code when checking out in order to get 5% off your final purchase. Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new day of Road to TC World 2020. Thank you so much for joining me. We are now going to continue with our expanded um, our expanded coverage of decks and we're going to take a look at Joshua Giel's um, ADP plus Cephalon deck which he got top 16 at Collinsville. Now this deck has definitely been under, under the radar for quite a while. Um, it uses ADP's Alter, Creation, GX, and subsequently Ultimate Raid to set up extra damage and also extra prize cards along with a board full of energies. Thanks to a Double Dragon Energy and the myriad of fires we do have here, we use Blast Evelyn's Mind Blown attack in order to put energies into a Lost Zone and then um, just one kill anything that pops up and we have Burst GX for a late game one prize uh, guarantee and a Bursting Burn to leave our opponents burned and confused if we need to buy some time. Uh, we have Comfey as an anti-shock lock measure, as we do have um, the Double Dragons, the Flower Shield ability does work and prevents ADP from getting continually paralyzed. And we also have um, Keydran as a non-GX attacker, Lava Burn does 60 plus 30 damage to the bench snipe, and Heat Bazooka does 150 and you discard top 5 cards of your deck. That seems like a very powerful and um, annoying attack to deal with, uh, with the discard, but in the late game, 180 damage even, thanks to ADP's GX attack, might prove useful. And we have Shaman's and the Dene for setup, along with a single Ultra Crossma for Luster of Downfall for the late game. Now, we do have a bunch of supporters, Welder, Sycamore, and Guzmahala, and Guzma, we have our tackles as well. We have our B-Strings, our beloved B-Strings, we have our Via Seekers, and pretty much all around consistency. The Stealthy Hood does allow Comfey to work through Mock, so we have a guaranteed win against Shocklock with that. And so, let's jump into a ladder and see if we can get a good run going with ADP rounds here. Let's see what we can do. Alright. So, we are going to get to call the coin flip. We do win the coin flip. Um, I honestly don't know. I imagine you still want to go first, but I honestly don't know. Uh, our opponent sends a very friendly hello. We have a hand, which... Um, <laughs> remember yesterday we kept drawing double. Rescue Stretcher, well, today's theme is apparently double Via Seekers along with double Beast Strings in hand. Now, um, not terrible by any means, right? Not terrible by any means, though nowhere close to the um, to the Double Dragon and or Goose Mahala. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I probably should have kept the uh, Sycamore, not the Welder, but oh well. Go ahead and do this, and then I'll go ahead and do this. Set up for five. I definitely should have kept the Sycamore. Well, there's another Sycamore, so that's fine. Um, kind of want to keep this hand, so we'll go ahead and pass. So not the best start, but not the worst. The loss of resources, especially like I really hate losing the Seekers that way, but we still have our raw supporter, so it's not terrible. And we do lose the B-strings, which is annoying, 
uh, but ultimate ray obviously helps mitigate that so it's not the end end of the world um, you imagine as well that my opponent will have a slower ish start um, as he started the station on the active it's unlikely he'll be able to get an attack off especially if he starts his turn with primate wisdom and intrepid sword interesting that he chose not to grab any sort of um, the Dene or Shaman off of that, but we'll take it, right? We shall take it. All right, so there's a Goose Mahala. We do have our double dragons, which is great to see. Uh, Goose Mahala, I'll definitely get rid of this guy and probably the Welder. I don't see myself using Welder too much this game. Um, might as well, well. Yeah, might as well same as much as possible. I still have two other beast rings, so that's good. That's definitely good. And I'll go ahead and do this. Do I want to play the chaotic spell? I guess I'll play the heat factory just because I can. And then I'm gonna get damaged. That's okay, right? It's not the end of the world. Maybe I should have played a swell to stop a possible shrine. Um. There is a possibility of choice band Kukui Kale. There's certainly that possibility, right? Um, but I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling okay in this spot so far. We have our GX attack, that means we only need to KO two Seishins rather than three, which is really good news, right? Or we can KO Seishin or Angular and then see first G. Oh no, we can't first GX, that's fine. Can the first GX? Never mind. Can't GX twice in one game. Alright. Discards Metal Saucer and Choice Man off of that computer search. We definitely need to find a fire energy off of our Sigma though, which with 12 total in the deck, 11 essentially left, I'm feeling confident we'll be able to do that. I'm feeling confident. All right. So like I said, I'm not super motivated to to stream right now. It's I don't know. The whole COVID situation has been a, a very weird situation, I guess, in my life <laughs> overall. So I apologize for not streaming. I will go back to streaming once Rebel Clash comes out for sure though. Maybe earlier, but I'll definitely get back to streaming Pizzi Joe. You know? I am trying to finish Final Fantasy X on the Switch, so I might stream that. I also want to do more VGC on our road to Master World Rank. Well, I am doing that in Spanish. Maybe I should just do that in English, but oh well. I generally don't know what my point computer search is for. Like, did he computer search for Quick Ball? Did he computer search for Juniper and then change his mind? I don't know what he computer searched for. I really don't. So in an ideal world, I could go Goose Makeo Shaman, right? With ADP. And then that would set me for game. Because hitting for 180 on the station doesn't really accomplish much. Doesn't accomplish much overall, but with no metal frying pans, um, carrying two stations is really not a big deal. And still no energy attached by my opponent. Oh, there we go. There's a the Seeker. I really don't know what he computer searched for. Though, like, computer searching for the quick ball seems a bit of a waste. Maybe with this guy? But he got rid of a choice band, so. I guess with two of these guys on the choice band, he could have knocked out my ADP, right? I don't know. I don't know what my opponent was intending to do there. If we get this alter creation, um, uh, yeah, alter recovery, sorry. If we get this ultimate ray off, I'm feeling pretty confident we'll be able to win this match. Alright, so my opponent with the energy. Yeah, that was that was really 
I don't I don't understand the what my phone was trying to do. When computer search gets you anything, felt like he ended up being way too fancy. Like he might have gone for the quick ball for Shaman, but he already had Juniper, he already had Via Seeker. So it'd be better to just guarantee the energy. Keep the choice band, right? And then try to find double Delmines for the knockout? I don't know. Okay, so let's see if we can find a new opponent. With Turbo Dark, presumably. Right, we're up against Turbo Dark, presumably. We lose the coin flip. And my opponent chooses to go first, that's okay. Mm, yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. This gets me Guzma Hala, or I can even just Guzma, right? To get the attack off, and this gets me um, Shaman. So this is fine. This is actually a pretty okay hand. It's really nice that we don't need to discard for the Guzma Hala. That's pretty key. That is pretty key. If we didn't have the Guzma, we would need to discard for the Guzma Hala to find a float zone. My opponent will probably end up having a crazy turn one here though, as Turbo Dark Vision does. Ooh, but this is really, really harsh. Carvana, interesting. Really harsh double discard off the Max Elixirs. That's gonna greatly delay whatever my opponent is trying to do. Right? That's two energies that he cannot accelerate beyond his energy attachment per turn. And Certainly a less than ideal turn for my opponent. All right. Well, there's a Goose Mahala. I really think my best play here is to Guzma onto this guy. I really do believe that. Well, hmm, now I've changed my mind. Now I've actually changed my mind about that. Huh. <laughs> Now I regret doing that. Okay, I'm gonna grab this and I'll discard the fire, I think it's fine. There's a shaman. Yeah, I have ten more fires. Uh yeah, now that I think about it a little more, maybe the Guzma Hell play was better and then keeping the Guzma for next turn to KO the Den with Ultimate Ray. Well I have this, so that's nice. Yeah. Okay, so that works out. Yeah, the the deck Tells me, don't worry, Pablo, I got your back. And it's true, right? It's true. So we're gonna see a computer search. Lysander, not Guzma. I imagine, like, some people like to use the full art Lysander just because it's full art, and like, Guzma is 99% of the time going to be better, I think. But, oh well. Oh well. Okay. So there's the Cynthia with the Dark Rami. But yeah, at this point, I firmly believe my bow will not be able to knock me out. And, like, the fact that turn 1 she compressed away Carvana rather than Dark Rai GX tells us that my opponent's build is not quite optimal, you know? There's the Elixir. Right. He served to hit that after starting with two and having to discard them. But we simply see a pass. Oh my god. Well, that's really bad news for my opponents, that's for sure. I'll go ahead and do this. Right. For another of these guys, just to make sure I have even more attachments. Like, so I can spread the energy out. And then this is gonna be game, basically. We can go one here, one here, and then honestly one here. That way, no matter what he knocks out, I only lose one energy rather than two, in case he goes after a boss at one or even the Shaman. Um, if the ADP survives, though, like, it's just gonna be game over. N plus KO would be worst case scenario, right? N plus KO would be worst case scenario. So Dark Ride Prism. See Marty. Okay, well that's annoying because we lose this, but we're guaranteed to look at the next five four cards plus our top deck. Hmm. 
Finding a few belts. Okay. The big issue here is we have no way to retreat, right? That's the big issue. Um, so now if I attach this, and then I retreat, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's 250 plus 30 to 80, so I'm 10 damage short. I am actually 10 damage short, and that's fine, because I'm just going to attack this guy, right? Yeah, I don't want to pinch that. Hmm. Is there a better way to do this? Like not attaching energy fields lane? One, two, three, four. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and attach. Ultimate ray. Okay. Nothing will survive this next hit though, that's for sure. <laughs> that is for sure. Alright. So we have so much energy in play. My opponent would need to KO me with this Dark Rite Prism, and he doesn't even attach to it, so we're fine. I don't think my opponent realizes what he needs to do, but that's okay. He really needed to find a way to attack with his Dark Rite Prism, and with the attachment and double Dark Patch, or one Dark Patch, one Elixir, it was certainly possible. Now it's impossible, I'm pretty sure, unless he plays, like, Tax Switch. And there we go, yeah. I just had way too much energy in play for my opponent to to really do anything about it. Um, the loss of the two max elixirs was really unfortunate for him. The loss of the max elixirs was definitely, definitely awkward for him, but that's okay. Yeah, it happens. It happens. That's the issue of running things like research and the DNA and the quick pulls and ult pulls. There's just so much discarding. And knowing what to discard and when to discard it is also a very important skill. Right? A very, very important skill in Pokemon. Alright. So, I don't know why after this video it keeps going to the lo-fi music, which I'm not a big fan of. I like the regular remixes, I don't like the lo-fi music. Alright, so we are going first against a fire deck with a very suboptimal start. We keep drawing things that we have four of in pairs. And... well that's terrible. I mean, okay, so I have a few options. Option number one is to dead change this hand away. Which that doesn't seem very good. Option number two is to simply find ADP. And I think that's the best one because I might I could just end up losing here. Uh that feels so bad though. But using shame and setup for two also feels very bad. Okay, so I did price a single Double Dragon. I did price two fighters. I think I have to Dead Change, unfortunately. I do think I have to Dead Change. Yeah. It really sucks, but oh well. Really, really sucks, but oh well. That's a big loss of resources. Okay. So we're guaranteed the ADPGX next turn. So we've lost a few resources, but. Against the Torkoal V deck, we're gonna we're gonna assume it's not gonna be a terrible news, right? Um, this does 90 plus 90 with discard a fire. So Rangroup plus Torkoal, very decent idea and or combination, right? Just gotta make sure. Just gotta make sure you get those KOs. No welder for my opponent, that's really good. We're gonna go ahead and tackle for the two ADPs, and then we're gonna go ahead and discard one of them. And I'll keep the Great Catcher for now, though it's very likely that my opponent just won't. Um, won't have any GXs. Though it could be a Firebox-ish kind of deck, I don't know. So I'll do this. 
right? And I'm not threatened to lose my energy, so that's really good news. I'll just alter creation. There we go. Yeah, I don't see myself losing this much after this. We have lost these resources. These are not a big deal, and yeah. I got it simply scoop, so this deck's just overall presence seems to be too powerful. <laughs> just seems to be way too powerful. Alright. Alright. Not bad. Not a bad start by any, any means. Let's try to find one more game that actually goes on longer for more than two. Um, for more than two... We're on two or three turns. Yeah. Let's see if we can do that. Right. So I still don't know if we want to go first or second. I'll choose to go first. Uh awkward hand, but I have the tackle for the next turn, so that's not terrible. We also get a mulligan, so we get information on our opponent's deck. Which seems to be Ultra Necrozma card, right? <clears throat> so, going first, probably not the best choice. That's okay, I guess. We'll definitely take the two mulligans. Alright, so one way I can stop my opponent from attacking me is through the Chaotic Swell, so that's gonna be pretty good here. Uh, we did see N. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to attach that, even though I'll probably lose it anyways. I'll play this, and then I'll pass. Signaling a little bit of weakness, signal signaling a little bit of trickiness. And let's give a sad face, right? Oh, you know what? I might just get dumped here. <laughs> nah, this deck, you should be playing Lucky Egg. Right? Not... This deck should be playing Lucky Egg. And I guess this was way too fancy. I guess I should have played this instead. Yeah, that was way too fancy on my part. I should have just played the Chaotic Swell. Because then that stops an attack this turn. Right? That would have stopped an attack this turn. Yeah, there's a Lucky Egg. Yeah, that was unnecessarily fancy on my part. That was certainly unnecessarily fancy on my part. Alright. So, we're gonna go ahead and push Mahala. Discarding. Welder and... N? Well, let's do Sigma instead. Okay, so I'll do this, this, and this. Yeah. I fully expect my opponent to counter this stadium, right? So let's do that. That might stop my opponent from attacking. I don't know, but it might. Let's do this, let's do this, and we'll GX. And if my opponent can't attack me this turn, aka has to set up guard, otherwise he can't send a lab. Well, he could field lower, I guess. Um, but if he can't attack me, then he's gonna be in a lot of trouble. Finds a nest ball. We know he has a Via Seeker, so we know we know he's going to um, Sycamore this turn to find that guard, which makes sense, right? There's another double dragon. Yep, there's a stadium, perfect. So we get another try here. Bicycle for one. This is the deck I featured yesterday, so there we go. I hope my opponent is playing it because he saw my video, but he might just be playing it because it's a really good deck to be playing. Yes, either. So yeah, drawing a bunch of stuff here, painting as much as possible. Wow. Okay, so no more silent labs. Does find a treasure, of course, right? No more silent labs. That's huge, potentially. Potentially. Yeah, this is still really bad though, because I won't be able to ultimate ray. Yeah, I don't think I'm winning this. I don't think I'm winning this. Not with the Lucky Eggs. 
seems like an awful matchup. Oof. I'm gonna have to end. <laughs> Just gifting my opponent a brand new hand. Yeah, I don't see how I win this. Maybe through confusion? Nah, even then, like, I, I don't see how I win. I don't think I'll be able to win. Double card. Yeah, there's no way. There's absolutely no way we win at this point, I'm pretty sure. Absolutely no way. Do this, right? Yeah, but there's I, there's nothing I can do here. All right, <laughs> so it's a very quick game. Either you have an overwhelming precision and you beat down on your opponent. Um, if I don't play the, if I play the stadium turn one, I don't think that matters too much. The end result is that my opponent found what he needed. So, um, so yeah, pretty good deck though. Like against anything other than Ultra Cross Bar, which definitely seems like a terrible matchup, you should have a pretty good, um, a pretty good win condition, I'd say. Um, the GX and then the Ultimate Ray, not a lot of things can one KO AP on that turn. And then even if they do, then you have beast rings, right? So it's a win-win. If they knock it out, they activate beast rings. If they don't knock it out, then you Ultimate Ray and then just get a bunch of energy and then you beast ring. So. It builds this overwhelming situation where your opponent simply can't win. Yeah, your opponent simply can't win. But anyways, that will be all for um, ADP Blounds. Props to Joshua Yell. Pretty cool guy. Definitely give him a follow on Twitter at Joshua Yell. Yeah. And I hope to see you guys tomorrow for more expanded action. Bye.